So with the recent bushfire events happening across Australia, uh, there's a lot of things that scientists are worried about. Mainly the fact that these bushfires are now causing a huge impact on the carbon cycle in the atmosphere. And what I mean by that is that this impact is going to affect the rate at which the atmosphere or at which the earth is able to reabsorb the large amount of CO2 pumped into the atmosphere or re-released would be a better word from the burnt bushlands or forests of Australia. That's what this video is going to be about. Let's roll that intro and get started. Okay, so I've recently made a video on the effects at which the bushfires are, or the effects that the bushfires are having on Australia. Um, and now we're worried about the fact that these bushfires are releasing ridiculously large amounts of CO2 back into the atmosphere faster than the earth can reabsorb it. Well, these bushfires are still ravaging. They are still plaguing the lands of East Coast Australia. And it's mainly seen in New South Wales. In fact, currently there's been approximately 2.7 million hectares of land burnt or scorched. And it's not only the environment that's struggling. In fact, multiple parts of Sydney are now suffering with air quality because of these bushfires and because of the smoke haze or... Yeah, we'll say haze. Because of the smoke haze, that's being pushed into inland areas. In fact, some parts of Sydney have reached 12 times the hazardous level according to the air quality index. That's pretty bad. Some people are struggling to breathe even with a mask on. The effects of bushfires, especially in Australia, are considered to be a carbon neutral event. And what I mean by this is that these bushfires will release and reabsorb CO2 as well as remove plants and regrow plants at an equal rate, creating a net neutral cycle. However, the scale at which these forest fires are occurring are causing scientists concern in a sense that these carbon neutral events are going to fall apart because of the regrowth rate not being able to catch up with the destruction. Coupled with the increasing worst drought events in Australia, considered by the Bureau of Meteorology to be the worst in the last three years that we've had, it's not looking good. To put this into perspective that these large fires have on the destruction and re-release of carbon into the atmosphere, I'll delve back into very quickly the Amazon rainforest fires in which they burned and released approximately 14 million tons of carbon into the atmosphere over a span of two weeks. Although not as dense in vegetation or as large of an area, the Australian rainforest has been considered to be identical or similar to the Amazonia in terms of their carbon net production per square meter or hectare. Now Professor Bowman, an environmental change biologist at the University of Tasmania, has stated that we are entering a slippery slope of negative feedback whereby the forests are becoming a place of carbon production rather than a place of carbon storage. Okay, so here's the issue with what will happen if these forests or these carbon sinks are removed from Australia or essentially the planet. Forests and trees are the second most important carbon sinks for this planet, being only bested by the ocean. Forests are important for several reasons, primarily for the upkeep of the carbon cycle, the water cycle, the purification of the air that we breathe, and as well as being home to roughly 90% of all species on the planet. Trees are a necessity for the regulation of the carbon cycle. In fact, everywhere, trees will absorb approximately 2.6 billion tons of CO2 annually. Therefore, both the climate and the trees are interconnected. And what I mean by that is that they can both produce the CO2 as well as remove 
this CO2. They're both the cause and the effect. It also becomes a huge problem once these areas are removed because of forest degradation or because of the fires for the biodiversity in that environment. What I mean by this is that a lot of the species will rely heavily on these areas for survival. Once it's gone, they'll either have to adapt fast enough to survive or die off. They're not only extremely important in the regulation of greenhouse gases, but they also help purify the air that we breathe. During the day, plants will take in CO2 from the atmosphere and photosynthesize releasing oxygen, therefore purifying the air that we breathe with the oxygen that we need. Remove that, you're going to have a bunch of chemicals in the atmosphere. Once these systems are removed from the environment, we'll be entering a very dangerous negative feedback loop, as Bowman stated. Now the consequences involved with the removal of this environment is, as I stated before, not great. All those positives I mentioned, the removal of CO2, water purification, air purification, habitats for 90% of all species, yeah, all of that goes down the drain, it basically flips and becomes a problem. Without trees, the air quality would degrade substantially. There'd be a large release as well as maintenance of CO2 in the atmosphere and a huge decrease in oxygen, meaning there will be a lot of greenhouse gases stuck in the atmosphere that we will be breathing. The earth will become a drier place. What I mean by this is that trees anchor dirt and release water vapor into the atmosphere, essentially creating a very important component for rain. Remove that, you get a dry earth. Remove these trees, you get a polluted atmosphere. It's not great. And this is exactly what we're seeing in Sydney with the water, water? With the air quality being 12 times higher than the hazardous level for breathing. For it to be above the hazardous level, it has to be above 200. Times that by 12. Now it's not doom and gloom. It is you know, slowly decreasing, but it's still a very big issue. You know, I'll probably chuck some stuff up. You know, you would have seen it throughout the video. The one of the most interesting ones was the Sydney Harbour Bridge with the uh, smoke haze. You could barely see it. You couldn't see a lot of things really. So imagine being there and breathing that in with a sense that a lot of these masks that you're told to wear are not working. That's that. That's the end of the video. That was I consider to be rather quick. There wasn't a lot to go off of because although a lot of the carbon being released into the atmosphere and a lot of the trees being removed might cause a negative feedback loop in a sense that it's just going to constantly uh, be difficult for the CO2 to be reabsorbed, it's still big theory. It's still a major theory. Uh, we haven't really put into practice and there's not a lot to go off. So I figured I'd talk about it. A very interesting, very important topic because it can happen, it may happen, it potentially will happen in the future if we continue going down the track that we are going. These fires have not let up for probably a month and a bit now. They're still raging. There's approximately 90 fires, I believe, left over in New South Wales on top of the amount of air quality that's being degraded. Not great. But I hope you guys liked that video. If you did, make sure you like, comment and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you educate, don't eradicate you check out cape class great organization and i will see you guys in another video next wednesday bye bye